I'm Brandon Campbell, the Director of Small Business and Inclusion with the Little Rock Regional Chamber, and this is our story. I'm here at C Clear Vision Optique in Little Rock, where this company is owned and operated by a husband and wife team, Dr. Selena Watson and Chris Watson. After several years of working in the optometry business, they really truly believed in themselves and they told themselves time and time again that this was the time to do it and they went for it. And so when you're starting a business, that's the type of attitude that you have. And when they did that, they made history in the process, becoming one of the only businesses that are owned by African American that focuses in on the optometry business. And today, it's the only optometry clinic in the state of Arkansas. Thank you for having me here today. Mm. Yeah. Nice to see you. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. So I want to get right to it. What is your why? Our why is multifaceted. Um, you know, I started uh, seeing an eye doctor regularly myself around the age of eight, uh, whenever I failed a school screening. Mm -hmm. um, I got caught, letters sent home that I couldn't see. And so uh, from there on out through my adolescence, I spent a lot of time in the eye doctor's office. Um, and as a science oriented kid, it just became an option for me. You know, I never really entertained it as a potential career uh, choice. But um, once I learned the science and the mathematics behind what optometrists do, um, it became something that was an opportunity for me. Um, growing up in the Little Rock area, I graduated from Sylvan Hills High School here in Sherwood, so locally. Um, a black optometrist was not something that I saw, so um, part of what we um, kind of drove me there was to allow other youth that may be in the school systems now to be able to see someone that looks like them in a position of this, of this stature. Awesome. And so what makes C Clear Vision Optique unique? Well, so I would say it's, it's twofold. One, being that we are a minority or black-owned business, there are like not many at all in the state. But being that we're the only one, that makes us the most unique, right? Um, also, the uniqueness is the experience that we provide to our patients and customers, right? Um, we're very genuine. We're very caring, and you're gonna feel that from the first step you come through the door. Um, that was our aim and goal, was to be unique and make sure the experience was totally different from any other um, experience you've had with an optometry practice. Now you, got, you guys offer a lot. Tell me about some of the products and services that you offer here. Sure. Um, a lot of people think of eye exams for only people that need glasses. Um, mm -hmm. And that is one thing that's far from the truth. Uh, we want to think of eye care just like we think of dental care or just like we think of annual physicals with your primary care doctor. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, about every year, you need to come in, let me kick the tires and make sure that eye health issues are okay, even if you don't feel like you're having any vision issues. So um, we offer eye health examinations. Uh, so that way we can check the eye pressures, uh, look for the presence of glaucoma, cataracts, things of that nature. Um, we also, of course, offer services with regards to um, getting glasses prescriptions, contact lens prescriptions. I'm also a partnering doctor with a local facility for LASIK surgery. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in connection in a for referral network with cataract surgeons. So if there are surgical things that we're need to, needing to look into, I have those resources as well. Um, but we provide diabetic eye exams. Every diabetic person should be having an annual eye exam to check their eye health. And a lot of people don't know that and don't realize that they're looking for some visual clue uh, to tell them that it's time to go. Um, so we kind of see, you know, I like to say from 2 to 92, you know, I, I start seeing kids, you can get a lot of information out of a two-year-old, you'd be surprised, yes. <laughs> um, and all the way up until it's time for cataract surgery and beyond. Yeah. And I think this is a this is a very important question because we have several um, aspiring small business owners and entrepreneurs and especially those who look like us who want to start a business but they may not know what the resources are that's available to them. Okay. What are some of the resources that you all tapped into to help you all get started and continue to develop your company? Sure. Well, you know, first is to um, look locally within, you know, the colleague network. So um, I'm a member of the Arkansas Optometric Association, um, which is an all optometrist um, association here statewide. Um, and other people have done what we've done before. You know, we're not reinventing the wheel. Uh, so it, it's very important to use those resources that you have available to you. 
Um, also in the development of our business plan, I called on some colleagues that had opened practices in other states, um, asked them about banking research. institutions and, and, and just kind of doing our research. Um, also the market research was a huge thing um, that we got here locally through um, UALR and their program to kind of help with their small business programs about foot traffic and um, you know finding the ideal location for the type of business that we run. Yes, and um, ASBTDC yes. over at URLR, they do a really great job with that. So if you're out here and you're watching or listening to this, uh, be sure to contact them, ASBTDC. Uh, they can most definitely help you with starting your business and developing your business. Yes. Uh, now, I understand you are still fairly new parents. You have a two-year-old yes. son who looks a lot like you. <laughs> Yeah. I had a little something to do with it. A little it, something, but, but <laughs> just like him. And so he's such adorable. And so my next question to, to both of you, um, what is it like now, you know, being business owners, husband and wife, and also managing that, but now having a two-year-old that's walking and running around and getting all into things? You right. know, it's, um, running. It's, it's very exciting, fun, and it, it, it can be tiring at times just because, <laughs> you know, we're we're working here mm -hmm. at our own business, so we're making sure everything is ran correctly and mm -hmm. ran how we want it to be ran, you know. Mm -hmm. But then we also have to make sure, hey, we have to take care of our son as well. So one of the things that we do is we'll bring him in here sometimes so he can see this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I can kind of go on, one of the reasons why we, another reason why we open is like, so that he can see this and mm -hmm. so they can grow up in a business family right mm -hmm. a lot of times we just kind of foot to the pedal and just grinding every day mm -hmm. at jobs but if you go hey son you can do some things like this as well um so it's it's been a an adjustment but we love it i mean i wouldn't change it for anything yeah. And there are times that I, you know, um, although we are here five days a week, there are times that I carve out to have what I call my mommy afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, so currently he's in Mother's Day out, a half day program. And so um, on Tuesday afternoon, I leave the office and I go pick him up and we just have fun for the rest of the day. And so I'm um, just carving out that time to still be mommy and still go to the park and still go um, play Hot Wheels. And, and, you know, making that time outside of just the weekends is important. And, and if we have an after hours or a weekend patient we'll bring him up here and let him run up and down the hallway and um, you know if, if we um, we have a really good support network of family yeah. around too um, that is very open to getting him and as far as tips for other you know mothers yeah. other women um, the biggest thing is to have that support network find someone that you trust um, but make time for yourself to kind of carve out even just if it's a couple hours here and there yeah. um, that time that you can have with your child yeah. What are some, some black leaders, whether it be locally or nationally, that have inspired you in owning your business and, and growing it as well, too? Um, I mean, I say local. I mean, I would say Mayor Frank. I, I know this is probably cliche, but I mean, just being that he's I mean, the first elected um, black mayor in Little Rock, that, that's big. That's huge. Um, and for us, that kind of just gives us a little bit of more push and encouragement to go, hey, Let's continue to do this, right? Because our city's changing, um, and he's more—he's about the community, right? And we're about the community. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a, that's a local example. Um, this is this is probably on a bigger scale, but even older. Like I would say, Madam C.J. Walker is huge, oh, wow. right? Yeah, um, yeah, it's great. Like first black millionaire hair care product. Well, and I would say that, you know, the obvious people that um, kind of paved the way, not necessarily even in business, but just in the civil rights movement to allow us to be able to even entertain the idea um, of a locally family owned black business, you know, um, so a Martin Luther King, a Rosa Parks, you know, the um, just the history that's around Little Rock with Central High School yeah. and, and the and, um, the developments and advancements that have been made in our city. Um, and we just kind of want to be part of that continual process to make the um, 
medical providers in our area look like the people that we're serving. You know, um, Little Rock is nearly 50%, you know, kind of half and half um, racially split, uh, yet there are very few medical professionals that look like us. And so um, those, uh, all of those civil rights movements and, and types of things that have been done in the past were to allow us the opportunity to do these things and we're happy to be able to be a, a part of that in this local community. Mm -hmm. I think you all do a, a very good job with this and that's being diverse and attracting many different types of customers right. uh, to you. I've been in here, I observed it, and I just like, I just see the, the type of atmosphere that you all have really cultivated here. And so I wanted to say kudos, kudos to you all to you. continue doing such a great job with that. Um, cause I've seen them come from all over, many different looks and uh, places. They come from many different places across our Little Rock region. And so I, I mean, one that. thing that we kind of, I guess, pride ourselves on is like, it's not, we don't just see people that look like us. We see people that are Caucasian and uh, Latin descent and, you know, all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we've had people come from as far as like Camden and mm -hmm. El Dorado and mm -hmm. things like that. So, or even Russellville. So mm -hmm. we just, we don't want to just cater to just one culture mm -hmm. uh, or one ethnicity. Mm -hmm. We want to serve all and be diverse. Mm -hmm. And that's what you all are doing as well too. And so, what would you like for your legacy to be? How would you want to be remembered? I think the biggest thing for us um, is that we are honest mm -hmm. and genuinely caring. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so we want to spend time obviously to grow our business and spend time inside of these walls that we've built because we're proud of this, but we also want to make sure that we are intentionally spending time out in the community doing backpack drives, doing you know food pantry things, doing health screenings, doing those types of things where whether I've met you from you walking through my storefront mm -hmm. um, or whether I've met you at a community service event that you know that I'm here to help mm -hmm. and that we're genuine in what we do. Yes, this is my business and I need people to walk in the door to make money to support my family, mm -hmm. um, but I also want to support the community that helped grow us. Yeah. You know, um, We've lived here our entire lives and there was a point at which we considered moving uh, because we didn't know that if Little Rock was ready for what we were doing, mm -hmm. um, how well it was going to be accepted. Um, and so we were thinking about going to Atlanta. Atlanta is, you know, it's a safe place. And um, when we said at the end of the day, you know what, our family is here. This is what the place that raised us. This is these are our people mm -hmm. and, and we're going to set it up. And, and like they say, you know, you open the doors and they will come and they've come. <laughs> And you all are proud of our regional chamber members. Yeah. And so I ask you this, what has the experience been like as a chamber member? It's awesome. Yeah, it has it's been awesome. I mean, from day one, it's been like, I mean, we've, it's been welcoming and it's also, it's helped us by networking yes. and helped us business-wise. I mean, it's definitely um, helped like influx patients, leads, things like that. We met so many different people from so many different local businesses mm -hmm. um, and we all have a commonality um, that we want to, you know, brand ourselves and grow um, and that I feel like is best done through the networking process. So uh -huh. we've set up um, IRA accounts, we've uh, seen patients, we've um, done marketing, yeah. you know, all types of things uh, through just our membership and mm -hmm. um, Create Little Rock has been huge for us oh, yeah, to have yeah. other young professionals. That's what we first met. That's yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, just to meet other people that are doing what we're doing, share our struggles, share our uh, victories, and help each other learn how to how to you know link arms and do this thing yeah. together. Okay. Okay. Now it's time for my favorite part of our story, and that is the fast money round. Well, essentially, I just come up with three topics off top of my top of my head. I ask you a question, and you just have to answer them quickly. Okay. Okay. Blue or green? Blue. Green. What's the first thought on your mind right now? Kobe Bryant. Uh, I guess family, to be honest with you. What's the, the last book that you've read? Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, um, Becoming, Michelle Obama. Awesome, awesome. Love it, love it. Well, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. How can someone get in contact with you? Give us the, the, the address, phone number. Sure. You? So our address is 12400 Cantrell Road, suite number four, and that's in Little Rock, Arkansas, 72223. 
Uh, phone number is 501-414-8923 and you can find us on our website at www.doyouseeclear.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. Yep. Find us. Come yep. see us. Yeah. That's what they say. Come see <laughs> us. us. Come see us. <laughs> Come see them. <laughs> well, I'm Brandon Campbell, the Director of Small Business and Inclusion, and thank you for watching and listening to our story.